Don Blackshear, Pace Performance, Circle Track Engine Developer. Um, my whole career started in drag racing. Uh, my father drag raced and uh, we of course built engines ourselves. Uh, I was fortunate enough to win an NHRA championship in drag racing. Uh, moved into top alcohol dragster, competed in there, and have also competed in the nitro fuel altered ranks, uh, winning multiple national events there. Uh, got into sprint car racing uh, to help supplement my racing income, basically, uh, with building uh, open 410 type engines uh, with mechanical fuel injection. Uh, that was one of my fortes as a mechanical fuel injection stuff, so that's kind of how I got into the sprint car world. Um, as the cost continued to increase in engine cost in racing, uh, was approached by several sanctioning bodies to develop some form of cost containment sealed engine program uh, for sprint cars. Uh, worked with uh, GM Performance, uh, Bill Martins, and Pace Performance in Boardman, Ohio uh, to develop a 602 entry level sprint car engine program. Uh, developed a driveline hub assembly for it so it was a plug and play unit for a sprint car uh, and also do the accessory drives installs in the rear of the camshafts. Uh, once that program started going, uh, GM had me at uh, the RPM Promoters Workshop in Daytona, uh, and I happened to meet Mike Prophet and John McCoy of Knoxville Raceway, uh, and that's how this whole concept started with the sealed 525 crate engine in the 305 division. Um, they approached us about their issue of escalating engine cost in an entry-level division, and we worked on a program to develop the CT525 sealed GM crate engine as an option for the 305 division. That all happened uh, in 2015. Uh, at the end of 2015, we were able to test that engine at Knoxville Raceway uh, after the fair board approved and the competition com committee approved the engine package. Uh, actually, in this year's uh, 360 champions car, Matt Morrow did the testing for me there. Um, the engine was introduced at Knoxville in uh, 2016. Uh, Chris Wallraven was the first competitor to purchase one, uh, and it won opening night in 2016 in Chris Wallraven's car. Uh, at the end of 2016, we had five competitors utilizing the engine. Uh, we ended up with uh, two of the guys finishing in the top five in points in 2016. Uh, 2017, we had an increase of racers uh, utilizing the engine. Uh, we have 12 total engines uh, in the class. Uh, we had rookies come into the division. I believe there was five rookies that came into the division. Uh, rookies won features, and rookies also won, uh, Eric Bridger won the championship as a rookie at Knoxville with the CT525 spec engine. The weight engine, the uh, 525, is based off an LS3 design GM engine. Uh, that engine package weighs anywhere from 70 to 100 pounds lighter than what the existing built 305 packages are that are competing at Knoxville. Now, when you talk about 305s, there's a big difference between the 305 Race Saver, the Outlaw Sprint Warriors that run over in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and the Knoxville package. The Knoxville package is a pretty much open 360 with a spec cylinder head on it. Uh, they produce close to 600 horsepower uh, is what the top engines are producing, so it really doesn't blend in with exactly as a 305. The 525 engine, uh, it is a larger cubic inch than 305. It's 376 cubic inches, actually, but it is a sealed cost containment engine. It produces between 525 and 530 horsepower with a reverse tapered restrictor plate on the engine uh, to blend it with the existing built engines. That was the whole concept behind this program was to offer a cost containment, affordable, sealed engine package that would blend with the existing open built type engines and it's been very successful at Knoxville uh, qualifying within hundreds of a second of each other and they race wheel to wheel uh, side by side you know racing whether it's the build engine or the the sealed spec 525 engine it's actually succeeded expectations uh, with it because when you have an engine that is what I call contained in a box, you can't manipulate any performance enhancing parts on the engine. It is what it is. It really comes down to the talent of the racer and their mechanical ability to set their car up or their cruise is, is what dictates the performance of the engine. When you're dealing with an open engine type rules package, you can continuously spin to get performance enhancing options on it. Knoxville is an animal in its own. 
it is the hardest racetrack on engines in the world due to the continuous RPM and the load that's on the racetrack due to the traction that's there weekly, due to the track prep that's there. So when we came into thing, when we did the testing, I was like pretty happy with how things ended up. Uh, we made, we uh, made a few changes to pull the performance back of the engine to blend it more. And when we came out with the blended package, they qualified right on top of each other and they ran around there as as competitive as you could get it. The coolest thing for me personally is the influx of rookie racers in the class. Uh, we all know in today's world, performance is dictated by cubic dollars. And, you know, people that have their kids in carts and, and uh, micro sprints or mod lights or anything of that nature, a lot of them want to race sprint cars, but the cost to be competitive in a sprint car world is astronomical for a normal family with a kid that's got talent to do this. So this provides them that opportunity to race at Knoxville Raceway in a cost containment engine with a cost containment engine package that can be competitive with the built world and and have the potential to win and be on a level level playing field regardless what the financial stature, you know, of their situation is. As far as a performance change, no. Uh, as far as a durability change, we had two engines that had a piston failure this year, one early and one late in the year. And the pistons that are in these engines are a hyper eutectic design piston. So we're looking at a forged piston, a direct replacement that will add some more durability in that area of the engine. That's the only change that is we see forecoming of the engine. Um, Performance level is gonna stay exactly the same. It's just a durability parts change in the engine that we're looking doing strictly just for Knoxville Raceway and the environment that it competes in. The Knoxville program is a little different. We have in late models, uh, modifieds, asphalt and in dirt, we have guys running 80 to 100 nights on these engines with no internal maintenance on them. Just general routine maintenance of oil changes and air filters and things of that nature. Uh, I have guys that have more nights than that on them, but the whole Knoxville situation, we're looking at a 60 to 80 race would be about an average durability on the engine. And we've got engines that's got two seasons on them that haven't had anything done to them at all. Uh, and that's the thing with the open engine world. You know, you look at your maintenance costs yearly with that engine, you know, and it just continues to elevate the cost to be competitive. A new team wanting to get started up, we have a package that is the complete package. And when I say complete, it comes with every component needed, including the bolts, plumbing, to put the engine in the car. And that complete kit is $15,950. Now, a lot of the cars that people are buying have fuel pumps on them from the previous owner. If you have a fuel pump that is either a zero or a 400 style pump, the engine is $15,300 for the complete package, less the fuel pump. That engine comes complete with all the accessories needed to put it in the car. It's dynoed, everything's tuned with it. So basically when you get it, you put it in the car and go race the thing. Uh, installation time, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to put the whole install in a new car. Um, there's no modification needed to the drive line of the car. There's no modification to the throttle linkage of the car. So it's, it's truly what I refer to as a plug and play engine package. You can get us on social media, uh, Facebook, uh, paceperformance.com. I recommend you go through paceperformance.com because it has all the specifications on the engine and you can see it, uh, all the components that come with it and the whole design of the engine. The one thing that our engine package offers over any of the engine packages that are currently available in the country in the crate world is our secondary sealing program. This is something we developed in-house uh, and basically it was developed to the need to stop people from tampering with the engines. And what we developed was a QR coded sealing program. There is five seals on the 525 along with the factory GM seals, oil pan, timing cover, the uh, intake manifold and both valve covers are sealed on this engine. That QR coded seal gives you the ability to scan the seal with your smartphone if you have a QR code reader app on it. It takes you right to our database. You enter in the engine serial number which GM gives the block from the factory. You enter in a four digit number that I personally stamp in the intake manifold and it brings up all the specifications on that engine. Now the one step that I did to go further than anybody else in the industry in this is we have photo documentation of every seal that's on that engine. 
So when you're in the tech barn at 10 o'clock at night, you've won the race, the tech director can scan the seal, bring up the data from the database on it, and visually see every seal on that engine and how the seal is installed. I install each seal differently of how the cable's wrapped through before it goes through the block. So it's very visibly, you know, you can see if the thing's been tampered with or not. The ignition box program on these engine, it's a sealed ignition box. It has a mandated timing map curve for the engine and it has an RPM limit of 7,200 RPM. And that box is also sealed with a tamper proof tape to where you can't get inside of the ports of the box to make any changes in the ignition system. Been an exciting trip the last two years at Knoxville Raceway. And like I said, I'm the proudest of the rookies that are now getting the chance to show their talent. And, and we all know there's kids in this world that have the talent to do this stuff, but maybe don't have the financial resources to do it. And who knows, the next Steve Kenzer, the next Tony Stewart could be one of these kids coming out of this class. And uh, Eric Bridger's done an outstanding job this year. Uh, he had, I believe, uh, five fast times. Uh, he won multiple features. He won the points championship. Uh, the 525 this year, I believe, won the last six features in a row at Knoxville Raceway. It won 50% of the races. Uh, we had eight fast times this year with it. So it's just been an outstanding program. It's continuing to grow. Uh, more young racers are coming into sprint car racing. Um, and it's just, it's been an amazing trip.